Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to open this event and welcome you all to this webinar for introducing the Women in Fusion group. My name is Kalle Hainola and I am the Scientific Secretary of Women in Fusion. So this is the second webinar of an ongoing Women in Fusion webinar series. Our first webinar had audience from the Asian regions and this second webinar is focused for participants from North and South America. A third webinar is in the planning with a focus on the European region. What you can expect from today's webinar is to hear more about Women in Fusion, how to join the team, and you can participate in the discussion on needs and recommendations for Women in Fusion moving forward. We are happy to see such a great attendance online which is increasing as I speak. And we are looking forward for the coming presentations by our guest panelists and panelists, and your questions and comments in the Q&A session afterwards. So uh, today we are going to introduce you to the Women in Fusion group, but also we will hear remarks from Department of Energy and the American Physical Society. After that, we will have the most important part of this webinar, the Q&A session. So, uh, let, let us begin with the webinar. The introduction to Women in Fusion will be given by the chair of the group, Dr. Sehila Gonzalez de Vicente. So, Thank you please. very much, Kale. I'm going to share the screen right now. Let me... Thank you very much. It's uh, my great pleasure to introduce the group Women in Fusion in this webinar. As has been mentioned, it's the second one. The first one was focusing the ASEAN part. This is uh, to, to America, the South and the North. And for us, it's very important to be able to show who we are, what we do, and most important to have your questions and comments and uh, feedback on what we do and what we expect, what you expect from us to do. So the first Natural question is how did women in fusion start? Well, this group was an outcome of a seminar, a webinar that we have during the Fusion Energy Conference in 2021, during the pandemic time where everything was done online. And one of the outcome of the main outcome of this discussion was that we need to organize a group in fusion for women, for promoting their role, their work, to establish a good networking, and that group should be global because fusion has been always a global endeavor. So based on that discussions, uh, we started to work and to discuss and to start to produce uh, a number of uh, outcomes, and this is how the group was born. We have to highlight that there were existing, and there are existing, uh, local and domestic national initiative and they are really great and they are the pioneers in this area for example in us the women plus in plasma physics or the women in plasma physics in geo these are national or local initiative we rely on them for many things and we want to we aim to work with them together this is something i will explain later so Based on that discussion, the idea was to create a global network for women working in fusion science, research, engineering, and operation. And I want to highlight that thing. Women in Fusion Group is for everyone related to fusion. Doesn't need to be a scientist, doesn't need to be an engineer. It can be a person working on administration, on human resources at all levels, but related to fusion. And again, we aim to be global. We, our whole spectrum is to have a global action, a global capacity of creating networking, etc. And for that, domestic groups, local groups are really important. We have to do this thing together. We cannot do it alone, and it's not our intention to do it alone. So, which is the vision of women in fusion? Basically, we want to promote women in fusion. We want to be the global platform for encouraging women and highlight their roles in the fusion field. We support women in all backgrounds, 
uh, STEM, legal affairs, administration, communication, and others. Again, this is something very particular of our group. Since fusion is growing, we don't have only physicists and engineers. We are more. We are, we are having people with different skills, but nevertheless, they belong to fusion. So they need to be also promoted and that we need to increase their visibility. These women has to be part of this community. We want to be global. We want to have a platform. We want to be the meeting point. We want to promote and help national groups, local groups, existing groups, or new groups that are going to be created, even in a single institute. We want us to use our resources to promote the message, to share information, to uh, provide good practice examples, etc. So we, we want to be an integrated entity, a platform for everyone. Which are our mission? The first one is to achieve gender parity within the fusion community through network building, promotion of women in science, and, at, and all educational level. For us, it's very important not to focus on senior careers or in students, but going through the whole spectrum from students to be attracted, women students to be attracted into the fusion field, middle managers, senior managers, we want to cover all the spectrum. We want to facilitate the establishing of a friendly work environment for everyone, paying attention to diversity and increasing the visibility of women in fusion. We want to acknowledge the, main, the many contributions made by women in fusion science research, technology, and beyond. As I said before, we aim to include all the skills needed and present in the fusion community nowadays. And of course, we want to promote fusion. We are fusion at the end of the day as a clean source of energy in support of the fight against climate change. So how are we going to implement that thing? How is going, we are going to succeed in this ambitious goal? This is our strategy. The first thing is to promote gender parity within the fusion community. One of the main points is to be able to provide mentoring and networking opportunities among women in fusion. We want to find role models at all levels, as I mentioned, students, middle career, top managers, because everyone in different stage of their career need some examples or guidance. So we want to cover all the whole spectrum. The objective is to attract women in the field, increase the visibility, and set up a, never, a global work network to help the community. For us, networking is extremely important because it's proven that thanks to networking, people get stronger, increase the visibility. It's easier to solve any kind of issue that you can have, and it also is much easier to have a better career, professional career. So other important action is to establish a friendly and productive work environment for everyone. In this, it's very important to increase the visibility of women. We want to highlight the work done for women. We want to push for women being present at conference, at high level discussion panels. They need to have the opportunity from the students to the senior top managers to show what they are doing, what they are producing, how they are contributing to, to fusion. That has, cannot be hidden. Second thing that we want to do is to, to set up good practice. We want to find good models. We don't need to focus on the negative things, how bad this is done, how bad this is done, no. On the contrary, we want to find institutions, organizations, private or public, where we can say, look, this strategy is working. Women are getting happier. They are increasing the, the number of women in their uh, workforce. Why? Because they establish this kind of policies. This is a very good example of good practice. And these contribute to other organizations that can copy, tailor to their needs, this kind of model. If something is working and producing good results, this needs to be known by the rest of the community. And this is really important for us. We want to promote fusion as a clean source of energy in support of the fight against climate change. We cannot forget that we are working to have a 
new source of energy, which is clean and safer, and that will improve the quality of life of mankind. And we should be proud of that. So women should be also very proud of belonging to this community. And we want to be present in different conference and events related to that. It's part of our mission. We want to set up also a research program, but not a research program maybe in physics or engineer that we already know, but also to have to be able to provide data about the presence of women, the kind of jobs doing for women in future. We want to have proper data because at the end of the day to have good decisions, to have a realistic view of uh, situations, we need to have the correct data and this is really difficult. We want to collect all this data, we want to analyze this data, and we, based on that data, we want to provide evidence-based reports that can be used for policymakers in proposing and implementing different policies that really help the role of women in fusion and in STEM in general. But again, getting this data, analyzing the, the, the data correctly is extremely difficult and for that we will need the help of the whole community and finally we want to create a global pl platform and this is why we are very focused on attracting people from the east people from the west people from europe from all around the world because fusion has been always an international community and for us the key point is to be the platform we want everyone to use us to promote what they need, to promote what they do, to show the world what is being going here and there, and to take advantage of all these possibilities. This group will rely a lot and is relying on a lot in national and local organizations that can use us to show the world what they are doing, the possibilities of networking. So please use us as much as possible. We will be really happy to team up with you. We want to be a global voice through this platform. Based on that, we have a global presence. And as uh, April 2023, we have uh, members all around the world in the five continents. We are really happy about that. I'm proud. It's been a way to work and to set up the group and uh, make it us to know in different institutes and organizations. So help us in promoting. Uh, we are very open to to uh, to accept anyone who could contribute to this goal, who feels uh, sharing that kind of uh, views and uh, intention. So you can see, so, so far we are really present everywhere in the world. So you can see here uh, faces of some of our members, and uh, we are really happy and proud to to be able to to serve to the purpose to all to all of them. Finally, I would like to mention one of the important points that we have received a number of emails and tests in the forum of our website, etc., about the mentoring program. When are we going to have a mentoring program? How is uh, when are you going to have that? Please set up a mentoring program. It seems there is a lot of demand for mentoring program, which means that people need advice. Women need advice. So this mentoring program was set up the 8th of March to commemorate the Women's Day and also the first official birthday of Women in Fusion. We are really proud and our mentoring program team is doing a fantastic job in setting up everything. Uh, we already have 11 mentors and 12 mentees, so we need more mentors and mentees. Uh, please go to the website, you go here to activities, you see mentoring program, you click there and you can see all the um, indications is a really easy going thing uh, and friendly. Please, if you feel that you want to provide some help by mentor, wonderful. If you feel that you would like to be a mentee, excellent, go and register yourself. One thing I wanted to, to explain, to be a mentor or a mentee, you need to be a member. And becoming a member, it takes you two minutes. There is no fee, it's completely free. So please take a look and eventually join us. Important 
message about the mentoring program. This is are the areas of mentoring, physics, engineering, administration, legal, legal, and communication. As you can see, it's not only physics and engineering. We want to cover all the skills available within the fusion community. So, where are we? How can you find us? Of course, always through the website or an email, we will uh, um, answer immediately, but we want to be also present and international forum. We, were, we want to put on the table the, work, the problem of creating a diverse workforce. And this is one of the main missions, and we are fully committed with that. So, so far, we were very uh, honored to be invited as a briefing on the developing a diverse work fusion energy workforce. Last year in December in Washington, we were also part of the Fusion Power Associated, uh, the meeting that took place in, in Washington last year in December. We did a webinar with our colleague from Women in Nuclear IEA at the IEA the 13th of February, where uh, Women in Fusion Group was presented, mostly devoted for diplomats and high level uh, ambassadors and so. So, as you can see, we want to inform and make aware everyone about fusion, about the role in women in fusion, and how to push for this. For this. Uh, we were very happy and we honor, we very honored to have the first interview uh, for women in fusion was given by DG of ITER. Uh, Mr. Pietro Barrabaski. It was also done last year in November when he strongly support us and this diversity policies in big organization and in any organization related to fusion. The website, uh, the interview can be found in the Women in Fusion website. So please go and take a look because it's really interesting and encouraging, I would say. The next event where Women in Fusion is taking the leading role is a launch event during the Fusion Energy Conference in London. So please take a look and register. When ready, the registration will be an event, a, a, a site event under registration. So please keep an eye. So after all this, why do you think joining Women in Fusion is an interesting thing? Why do you think it's convenient? The first thing is because you are joining a global network of uh, women, and not only women, also men, working on fusion. And this networking, knowing each other, is really an added value. Then the second thing is because you will get the support of the whole community. It's important not to feel alone, it's important to have the community supporting you. And this is something that Women in Fusion intends to do. And the second, because it's a collaborative place. We are collaborating with, in, with the, the industry. We are working with uh, many other institutions to push for fusion and also the, and the role of women in fusion. So we cannot forget that we are working all for having fusion as a commercial source of energy. Sorry. We have the founders, which is the International Atomic Energy Agency, ITER, Eurofusion, General Atomic, Fusion for Energy, and the Indian Youth Nuclear Society. We have very good supporters, Fusion, Kyoto Fusionary, Nuclear Fusion, Fusion Industry Association, and others. So again, if you want to join us as a supporter, please, we are really happy to hear you. Let's talk and see how you can help us. Here you have all the contacts. Anyway, we are always available for any kind of question, comments, or whatever you could need. Um, please, very important for this webinar, your questions, comments, suggestions. We are really happy to hear you at the at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sahila, for this introduction to Women in Fusion. Now, I would like to give the floor to the U.S. representative of Women in Fusion and the steering committee member, Sabrina Johal. She will provide us remarks on the need of diversity and inclusivity in the fusion workforce. Please, Sabrina, go ahead. Thank you, Kali. 
Um, I'd like to start by welcoming everyone and thanking you for your interest in your participation and really reiterating uh, the need for your support and membership in the success for women in fusion. Uh, there are a couple of points made by Sahila that might just require a little bit of highlighting. The first one is when we originally started discussing a networking and membership organization for those who self-identify as female, we wanted to focus on all personnel that work in fusion. So that includes engineers, all scientists, chemists, physicists, support staff, business, operations, and many others. And we also wanted to focus on not just women, but men as well. Allyship in this mission and the support of the men that we work with are very important in making progress and overall improving the inclusivity and the gender imbalance that we're experiencing today. The second point I'd like to emphasize is the intention of Women in Fusion to be a global and international organization that really partners with domestic institutions. There's a lot of work already being done within each country that we want to partner with and collaborate with and really expand upon. You can imagine that gender issues in China and India and Europe and the United States, among many others, are all very different. It's only by partnering with the existing institutions in country that we can truly make progress and achieve understanding. We will then elevate those challenges to the international organization for additional consideration and collaboration. I am passionate and personally really excited to be part of WIF because I felt how important it is to have resources available for networking and mentoring, especially when you're just getting started in the field or you're at mid-career level. I started my career as an officer in the United States Navy, and I was also the first female on the ship that I integrated out of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. I know that I personally would have greatly benefited by accessing a resource like WIF to connect and have conversations with other women who were having similar experiences at that time. Getting to practical economic fusion energy is an enormous lift, as we all know. The scientific, technical, engineering, social, and political challenges are many and they all need to be overcome. Workforce development and access to talent is extremely important. We will not be successful if we only access 15% of women when women make up 50% of the population. We need to do better and we need to make sure that everyone who has the skills and desire has a chance to contribute. We truly need everyone. Access to a range of diverse mentoring and networking resources is also important because not everyone comes to the field with the same experiences or with the same goals. We want WIF to be one of those resources to help women in fusion help each other to succeed and thereby help fusion energy become a reality. We want women from all backgrounds to be part of the solution. And if you have any questions or any interest, please feel free to reach out to me personally or any one of the steering committee members. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. I'm now turning to Dr. Graeme Shaw. She is Program Manager of Fusion Energy Science Program at the Department of Energy. Dr. Shaw, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Um, hello everyone, and thank you for that introduction. And I appreciate everyone's participation in this webinar. As the Fusion Nuclear Science and Enabling Technologies Program Manager for the Office of Science, Fusion Energy Science Program, I'm pleased to share with you our commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. As part of this commitment, the Office of Scientific Workforce Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion was established to lead the DOE Office of Science Initiatives in advancing DEI. And how we manage research and scientific user facilities, as well as our national laboratories. The Office of Science DEI is responsible for developing and coordinating specific policies, 
plans, procedures that focus on advancing DEI in our sponsored research programs and offices. With the Fusion Energy Science Program Office actively participating in these DEI efforts, in addition to these efforts, we support fusion and plasma science and technology community efforts to promote DEIA. Our community efforts include programs as the American Physical Society Division of Plasma Science DEI Organizing Collective Committee, Women in Plasma Physics, Fusion and Plasma Science Summer Schools, Undergraduate Research Experience Programs, the US Fusion Energy.org webpage, and public outreach programs at universities with established fusion and plasma science research programs. This is exciting, I must say. The fusion energy is what is going to be happening in the future, and we're excited about this. And we want to make it a reality, but we need to work together to build a strong, prosperous, sustainable pathway. This pathway requires evidence-based practices to address systemic issues and developing programs that contribute to all parts of this pathway. This is from public awareness, early to high education programs, skilled and technical workforce development, just to name a few. But more importantly, our commitment to DIA will be integral an integral part of the development of this pathway. It is vital that we promote and support DIA throughout the development of this pathway. By doing so, we ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to contribute to this exciting future right now. So thank you again for allowing me to speak to you today. And I look forward to seeing the progress we can make together in advancing diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility for the future of fusion. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Our next speaker is Dr. Crystal Bailey, who is the head of career program at APS. Dr. Bailey will give remarks on mission of APS and on making greater impact through networking and collaboration. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here to speak with you today a little bit um, generally about what APS is doing in this space. I think there's a lot of uh, potential for synergies, a lot of things that came up <clears throat> in the previous presentations that we have some experience with and, and, and can kind of help out with. Um, so, whoops. All right. First, uh, just to kind of underscore some of the things that Sabrina was pointing out, at least in physics, um, you know, the the challenges that we're facing in terms of representation of women uh, when it comes to physics. Um, you can see the data from iPads that when you look at the bachelor's degrees earned by women, uh, you know, computer science, engineering and physics disciplines are all kind of down here at the bottom. Uh, nowhere near the parity that we would want to see um, and. Though it's trending up, we're still way, way far away from where we really want to be. And the situation, unfor unfortunately, does not improve significantly when you go toward doctor, doctorate uh, recipients. Uh, the fraction of women earning doctorate degrees also for physics uh, down around 20% um, at the bottom of the pack. So um, this is obviously not what we want to see, and we're doing everything we can to try to address some of the issues. Um, we do have some insights into what the issues are. Um, there is a, a very uh, well published, uh, highly recognized body of research around this uh, phenomenon uh, by Zara Hazari uh, on, you know, what what factors kind of increase persistence of women in physics. Uh, and based on some of that research, we've developed some programs. For example, one of them is the Conferences for Undergraduate Women in Physics. And I just want to take a moment to gratefully acknowledge that uh, the QWIP, as it is called, is supported by the Department of Energy and the NSF. So we are very grateful for that support. <clears throat> but the program goals for the conferences are based on that research. Our goals are to deliver programming that strengthens identity and career choice in physics. That's a really important um, aspect that the research has discovered is related to persistence in physics. Um, we want to establish community spaces that foster a sense of belonging. And we also want to support leadership development and sense of agency. Uh, when students are able to actually get involved themselves and organize their own events, um, make an impact 
and receive recognition for doing so, those also contribute to persistence. Specifically, what these conferences are, um, they're conferences that happen all over the United States. This past year, uh, we returned to in-person and we had 14 sites around the United States and um, one in Canada. There were uh, 1,800, over 1,800 participants came to those in-person meetings. We also had a virtual uh, meeting, and we want to also gratefully acknowledge General Atomic's sponsorship for the virtual event and Heising Simons Foundation. Uh, they also helped sponsor the virtual event. But General Atomic's did some really fun um, virtual tours, which I think everybody really enjoyed, and it was great. Um, and we heard from Sabrina also at, at the conference, which was awesome. Um, in addition to that, we have career fairs, we have workshops, poster sessions, plenaries, networking events, um, par partly focused on science, you know, what women are doing in science, um, but also, uh, you know, careers in professional development, workforce development, all kinds of the skills that we want to help develop in the future workforce. So those are the those are the focuses of the QIPs. And there's a picture from a couple of years ago at University of Minnesota QIP. If you want to learn more about the program, the URL is at the bottom of the screen. I also just want to talk a little about a little bit about impacts that the QIPs are having. This is the most recent data, including the 2023 attendance. Um, so as you can see, right around 2019, we were hitting almost all of the U.S. female physics degrees in the United States were coming to these conferences. So um, they really do have a big impact. Uh, unfortunately, this dip was due to the pandemic. We had to switch to a fully virtual model for two years, but we were really pleased to see that we're almost back in 2023 to our pre pandemic numbers. As I already mentioned, um, we, we did some evaluation of the QIPs and there were pre post survey uh, uh, analysis of surveys. And we actually found that the QIPs themselves had an impact on these indicators related to persistence. The participants leave conferences with a heightened sense of being part of a physics community. They whoops, leave um, with uh, a, a higher view of themselves as physicists, and they increase their awareness of gender related issues in physics and increase their feelings of being valued and respected in the field. And as we said, all of these outcomes are linked to persistence. We do hope to we've been doing QIPs now for a long time, so we hope to be able to look at some longitudinal data to actually see what some of the impacts were on career pathways of attendees. Furthermore, APS also has an advancing graduate leadership program, which was also funded by the Heising Simons Foundation, very similar in scope to QWIP, but focused at the graduate level. Um, we had our first inaugural meeting in August of 2022, similarly had workshops, panels, trainings that were focused on professional skills development and leadership skills development. Um, and so that was a really big success. Preliminary evaluation data shows that that was also a very effective conference. So we're looking at ways to um, see how those two conferences can sort of work together. Um, I'll mention a few other things that we have. Uh, we have a committee on LGBT issues, an ethics statement, and a code of conduct that is relevant to every APS meeting. We have an ethics point confidential reporting service. That's an extremely important resource we found. Um, to be able to address harassment. A lot of times women who are victims of harassment have no idea even how to report uh, those incidents. And so having a confidential, clear way to report that is very important. We have an ethics committee, a society's consortium on sexual harassment in STEM, and a statement from the status of women in physics. If you want to learn more about those things, you can go to womeninphysics.org and minoritiesinphysics.org. I also just will mention, since there, we mentioned mentoring, uh, we do have a couple of mentoring programs too. Um, our national mentoring community is there to support individuals of different minoritized and marginalized identities that can include gender and also racial and ethnic identity, uh, Black, Latinx, and Indigenous students in particular. But the program components includes relationships with faculty mentors, professional development, and we do have a special fund um, just for emergency aid for um, students who are mentees of this program. We also have an industry mentoring program, which has been very successful with uh, over 100 mentee mentor matches uh, made. So 
And that's actually what I have for you today, just to kind of talk about what what APS is doing. Um, I think from what I've heard in this discussion, there's a lot of potential for collaboration and we're very much in support of women in fusion and, you know, are here to help in any way that we can. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. And uh, thank you for all the distinguished speakers for the interesting uh, remarks and the presentations. Uh, now it's time for the Q&A session. The session will be moderated by the Vice Chair of Women in Fusion, Shirata Pachnikov. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for those really interesting talks. Uh, so nice to see us all together and um, on such an important topic. And we do have a few questions that have come in. And I wanted to uh, uh, start with the first one, which is a really good one, which is who can actually join Women in Fusion? And is it only open for women? Also, is it only open to scientists? So maybe Sahila, that's something that uh, you've been talking a lot about and you mentioned it yes. in your presentation. This is really a good question. I should be very clear to everyone. Women in Fusion is open to basically everyone which is related to Fusion and is aligned with our mission and vision. So this includes men, women, being part of the Fusion community as a scientist, as a legal, as a communication expert, any kind of role that the Fusion community needs is very welcome in Women in Fusion. And again, it's for men, for women, for everyone. We need to work with everyone. We need everyone involved. Can men also be mentors or mentees in the new program that was launched? Yes, they can be mentors and mentees. It's not a restriction. And maybe someone from the mentor group can go further in the information here. If someone wants to complement, I'm happy. But everyone is welcome. Shirley, maybe you want to compliment. I'd love to. Thank you. So we did this program so that we could have Can you speak a bit louder, uh, Shelley? It's a little hard Sorry. to hear. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. We created this program program so we could have broad participation. We really want to reach um all genders and we want it to be something that was actually in the QA just for scientists. We want this to be for someone who is starting their career, perhaps is in a legal role or someone who is maybe in an HR role. So we want this really to be available um, from the mentor and mentee side. Um, so don't be shy mentors to step up and and uh, whether male, female, we would love um, full participation. So we're, we're really excited about this program. I feel like we've made some really good strides early on and we're just looking forward to seeing it develop more. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. So it sounds like a great initiative and I know that Women in Fusion, that we have some new activities that are planned. Is there a fee now? And are we going to ask for a fee in the future? That's well, the, plan, the plan is not to ask for a fee. We are currently not asking for any fee. So if you join as a member, it's for free, which you will not be requested any payment now or in the future. Uh, we trust and rely in our uh, supporters um, and all people working for women in Fusion, is, uh, we are all working for free. So our cost to the community is zero. And for extra things, we go get back to the, the, the supporters, which uh, we are really happy to have them. And whoever who wants to help us is always very welcome, but not charging fees to the to the members. It's not in our plans. Okay, great. We have another question. Is Do we have some kind of, is there an email or a place where women can ask for help uh, if they want to be a mentor? or if they have any other questions that need to be addressed. Basically, how can we communicate with you? For the mentors program or only or in general? Uh, for uh, both, this person asked both. Okay, the best way to communicate to us is go to the website, you have a, an email, send an email and we will answer you immediately. 
Second point, if you are a member, you have access to the forum, so you can type whatever you want in the forum, any question, suggestion, ID, whatever, feel free, okay? The forum is to hear from you and to hear from, uh, from the members uh, discussing whatever topic. We read the forum, so if you put any kind of uh, suggestion, question, whatever in the forum, we will be able to read it and provide an answer. And for the mentors program, you also can communicate with us. So, uh, for example, related to the mentor program, there were a number of suggestions in the forum about that. So, it's uh, really simple to get communicated with us. Go to the website and use uh, what is available there because uh, we will read it. Yeah, basically, if you join, there's just a button that you click that says join. And once you remember, you can have access to the forum and it's it's pretty and, clear from and, there. Yeah, it's yeah. the best way. Okay. Um, how can I uh, promote my own events if I'm already doing uh, women in fusion events or STEM events to promote gender equity? Uh, is there a way that we can partner with you? It is a very simple way. Contact us, we talk, and this is one of the role of the platform, you know, to tell us how we can help you in promoting your event, in what, in provide advice for your event. You want to have an event you have never done. You want to have sort of a discussion on how to start, how to set up this, any advice, whatever thing, contact us, and we will make sure you receive the proper information. We will set up a video call or whatever is needed. Said that. You may know us because you may find us in a conference, in a meeting, in whatever, feel free to approach us. And we usually have focal points for different areas. For example, Sabrina is our focal point in US. So if you meet Sabrina, if you want to talk to Sabrina for something that you want to do, do it. Ming is our focal point in China. So if you are from China, you want to promote something from China, you want you feel more comfortable talking your own mother language you can talk to me. So we are very open uh, and to, to discuss with everyone, to provide help to everyone. Just contact us. Okay. Um, are you going to be setting up national chapters that, similar to women in nuclear? Well, no. And the reason is because we are a global group. We have... Uh, Focal points, again, for example, Sabrina is our focal point in US, we have focal point in China, we have focal point in, Co in Korea, we have a number of leaders, let's say, our delegates in different countries and regions, but the aim is to be global. And if you are doing something in China, promote it through us, and people in US can understand about that, and eventually they can join if they can. Or if we are doing something at the 4 in Barcelona and someone who is in Korea is interested, can try to, to connect and, and go. So we, our aim is global. Said that, we'll have uh, focal points in the different areas and countries. Okay. Can, can women in Fusion help me find a job in Fusion? I think... <laughs> Fusion, uh, finding jobs in Fusion is becoming relatively simple. Uh, when I was <laughs> finishing my PhD, it was more difficult. <laughs> uh, women, in uh, women in Fusion, one of the objectives is to create a big network. And a network is useful for finding jobs. So can we help you directly? Well, we are not going to provide you an interview. But can the community help you to find a job? Yes, because networking is one of the best ways to find a job. And if someone from the group wants to contribute to that, please. I see that uh, Dr. Bailey has a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And then I also have a question for you to follow up, Dr. Bailey. Okay, thank you. I just, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that APS also has a job board and um, <clears throat> we, it is, all over the world we have we have people posting jobs all over all over the world um and so just as a reminder um it, it, it yes we do have some fusion jobs on our job board and if you're looking to post fusion jobs it it's it's a great job board it works great um you'll get a lot of, of visibility there so i just wanted to share that <laughs> great yes we Thank post you. also jobs at yeah. women in fusion and the more visibility the better but we don't provide the interviews let's put it in that way yeah but it's good to know there are jobs out there. 
And to Dr. Bailey, you mentioned in your presentation some trainings uh, to improve skills. And um, someone asked, are these specifically for women to improve women's skills, or do they also address kind of the system systemic issues of unconscious bias or or when who men who are in uh, positions of power hire people like quote unquote like them how can we improve that situation and are there trainings for that yes uh the, the short answer is yes so um so i kind of mentioned some of the outcomes of people attending the the q whips um so in addition, yes, we have like at the QWIPs, we have things on resume writing and different career panels to learn about career pathways, but we have a lot of sessions on um, imposter um, it's phenomenon. They're calling it imposter mm -hmm. phenomenon okay. um, on implicit bias, on navigating male spaces, on, um, you know, all kinds of things related to experiences of people who are minoritized and marginalized along the sort of gender axis in physics. Um, and uh, I think, you know, our conferences aren't exclusive to women or, or gender minorities. Um, we do allow men to participate, but, you know, because I agree completely with what Sabrina said. Allyship is also extremely important, and we don't want to exclude anyone from spaces where they can learn how to be a more effective ally. But we are very careful to kind of manage the presence of individuals who are not in those minoritized groups. We want to make sure that we're creating a safe space where people are very able to share um, share information about their challenges and receive support and assistance uh, in helping them sort of be resilient. Um, Okay. And form those networks. So yes, huge amount of our programming is focused on those kinds of issues. Okay, good. Thank you. I have another question that came in. You mentioned that Women in Fusion will try to collect best practices with the aim to increase inclusivity and diversity in Fusion. How do you plan on collecting these best practices? And do you plan to share suggestions coming from the community to all members? Well, the first source of best practice is our members. We rely on our members to inform us. In my institute, we increased the number of women by 20% in the last three years by implementing this policy. Maybe you can look at that and make a report of best practice. Or maybe in this uh, particular degree, the number of female best students increased by 20% in the last two years maybe you can look at that we cannot have eyes in every single institute or organization but we will have members we trust our members to have eyes in all institutes and organizations as possible that they can inform us about good practices it can be a small institution a small startup and a small um, institute here or there but nevertheless have put in place a really good uh, strategy to promote and to attract women in their workforce. So we need you, as I said at the beginning, we need all our members and we need to work together with all the other organizations. Today we have very good uh, two examples, DOE and APS, that we need to team up and find these kind of good examples and publish on our website to inform the community. And Sabrina wanted to add something, please Sabrina. I wanted to mention that when we um, set our objectives, mentoring was and mentoring and networking were two main uh, attractions. The third one was, you know, we all like data. Some of us are scientists and we really wanted to understand what the data was telling us in each individual country. And so part of our initiative in the future will be rolling out a doctoral program where we will be funding individuals from different countries and their faculty, and we've had some discussions already with faculty in the United States around um, the social science within the field of STEM, physics, science, other scientific fields to look at what is really going on. So these students will have their thesis and dissertation written around the social science of physics, for example. And they'll have an opportunity to work with their local faculty advisor and then also 
it will be elevated up to WIF uh, meetings and annual conferences for those to also talk among country to country and really start looking at what's the data telling us? Where are we today? We wanted it to set our baseline before we started making recommendations. Thank yes. you, Sabrina. Yep. Uh, I have another question. In the US, there's a great interest in inertial confinement fusion with strong leadership from Lawrence Livermore Lab that has many women scientists involved in their research and in management. Is Livermore Lab engaged with women in fusion? Well, we have to say that the director of uh, Lawrence Livermore Lab, who uh, um, was uh, very kind to contribute to the event in the 30th, 30th of February, uh, where Women in Fusion was presented by Women in Nuclear, was very keen on our work, and we plan to to uh, ask her to be part of us. At, uh, and so we have other members from Lawrence Livermore Lab being part of Women in Fusion. So inertial, magnetic, uh, mat whatever approach uh, fusion representative are very welcome in the group. But yes, we are in contact with them, with that particular group. Which, by the way, it was really nice to see an, a number of women presenting results and at top level position. So this is something to congratulate the whole community. Okay. And another question is, can women and fusion Help me find speakers, women speakers, and um, yeah, help well, us with uh, organizing that. I will say yes, because again, this is related to networking. Join us, go to the forum, put a question on the forum. I need the speakers for this event, or I would like to have a speakers this kind of uh, event where we are focusing on studying blankets, diverter, plasma performance, or um, kind of procurements for fusion, whatever event you are related to, explain and ask for help and ask for a speaker in the forum. Of course, Women in Fusion has a number of members that we could say, look, maybe you should try to contact this person and the other, but come join to the community and interact with the community through the forum that is only available for members. Well, yes. Me me wants to say something. And uh, just a very short uh, supplement. As also, I'm also very motivated about the speakers. You know, in the coming monthly the technical uh, technology meeting conference, which will to be uh, uh, which will be held on uh, 12th to 5th of September of this year, I'm charging student and the women session. You know, it's not easy to hold on the uh, women uh, plenary session, but uh, we succeeded. And we got the network uh, and got the, the female abstract. Totally, it's uh, um, 180 out of uh, 1,200 abstracts are coming from uh, women engineers. So it's a uh, good news. Congratulations. <laughs> good. Let's hope that we're going in that direction, continuing to grow. Um, Th that was the end of our questions. Do any of the panelists want to um, add anything or add any less comments to the, or still answer a question, or feel that like there was a question that should have been asked? I would, I would like to say all the questions were really great. If you have further questions, please, again, contact us. Go to the forum. We are really happy uh, to talk to you. If someone needs something more, in deep of because uh, whatever reason because you want to be a supporter because you are going to organize an event because whatever reason as us we will we can set up a video call and it is simple um and i would like to thanks uh, the two in invitees to this uh, webinar really your contribution has been very uh, useful and uh, you mentioned that you uh, wanted to see possibility of collaboration yes we should collaborate because this is the spirit. Uh, so thank you to both because we are really happy to have you here, happy to start collaboration and work together. That's the point, to work together. <laughs>